בשיחה הראשונה עם הזוכה בפרס הנובל בכלכלה, הפרופסור ג'וש אנגריסט, למדנו מהי אוניברסיטה מצוינת ומה סדר העדיפות הראוי במוסד מצטיין. אבל אנשי סגל באקדמיה לא עובדים באוניברסיטה, הם עובדים במחלקות ספציפיות. ולכן בשיחה זו ביקשתי מפרופסור אנגריסט לחדד בעבורנו מה הופך מחלקה אקדמית למחלקה מצטיינת? הרי במחלקה לכלכלה ב-MIT יש כמה זוכים וזוכה בפרס הנובל וכנראה שגם יהיו עוד כאלו שם. אז מה עושה את המחלקה לכלכלה ב-MIT לכל כך מצטיינת? האם מחלקה היא בסך הכל גוף שמגייס חוקרות וחוקרים מצטיינים או שמא, שמא יש למחלקה ערך מוסף? האם ואיך תורמת מחלקה לפריון מדעי של חבריה? ומה יכולים מי שאמונים על... טיפוח מצוינות באקדמיה לעשות כדי לקדם מחלקות מצטיינות. Well, the department is very important, but first of all, let me say, Gadi, I don't think the most important, I don't think the best measure of research success is Nobel Prizes. I'm happy that I won the Nobel Prize, but I wasn't looking for it. And I think economists in particular, you know, we're, we're at peace with randomness. And, uh, and, You know, the Nobel Prize, there aren't very many, and most of the people that should win by virtue of the quality of their contributions, not only in economics, will not, because, you know, only a couple people win every year, and there's thousands of very productive scientists and scholars in the world. So you shouldn't hang around waiting for that, and that's not the only measure of success, and I don't think it's the best measure, uh, because, you know, On the list, when I won, I know there's other people that could easily have won. And so, you know, there's a real sense in which I got lucky. So you need something a little broader. And the way we keep score in economics and the research side is by citations. And, you know, you have an impact on the discipline. And a very simple quantitative measure is, is your work cited? You know, in Hebrew, mitzutat. And... Um, so we have a lot of highly cited scholars, most of whom will not win the Nobel. It's true. We have Duflo. Uh, she won. And many people think Duran will win. But even if not, Duran is a spectacularly successful scholar. Uh, and you can see that in the fact that his scientific articles are cited and his books are cited. And also his books are widely read and sell very well. He's written a lot of books. in the political economy field. So, you know, again, it's sort of, how do you end up with a department where you have a concentration of highly productive, highly cited scholars? So you need an element of, of the support that I'm describing, which is really just, it's partly about money, but it's also about directing the money to the people who need it and will use it productively. And for that to be successful, you need an element of, in Hebrew, there's a word for it. There isn't quite the same. I don't know if there's an English word. Firgun. You know, you need people to agree that that's a good guy. That's a good guy or scholar, male or female. And we should support that person. And supporting you does not diminish me. You can't have too much competition. And... It's not a zero-sum game. And, you know, if Duflo is successful, that doesn't make somebody else less successful. You know, but there is a natural tendency towards jealousy. So you have to overcome that. And, you know, you see communities that kind of struggle with that, where there's a lot of jealousy and a lot of fighting. And, uh, and you see communities where people are willing to kind of rise above it. You know, um, I tried to meet that standard. Esther Duflo was my student. She was my PhD student. She won a Nobel Prize. And, you know, at some level, I might have been disappointed. Why, I didn't, why didn't I win? Well, eventually I did win, but I didn't know at the time. But I was as pleased as could be when Esther won and very proud. And uh, I would have continued to enjoy my work and my life if I had not won the Nobel Prize. And I would have been... made happier by the fact that Duflo won. But there is an element of competition in academia. In fact, academia is highly competitive. And you're not successful if you don't compete. It's a competitive sport. You want to be, especially in the sciences, and 
and increasingly in economics, there are things to discover and do. You'd like to be the first. You get the most credit if you're the first. So if you're the first person to show something or to use a particular method and establish a certain result, you know, uh, uh, Card and Kruger were the first to apply kind of modern empirical methods to the minimum wage question. And the Card, uh, David Card, who won the Nobel with Imbens and me, you know, was the first to apply those methods to immigration, the question of how immigrants affect native workers. And he gets a lot of credit for that, and rightfully so. He was a pioneer. You'd like to be a pioneer. And um, so that's a competitive enterprise. So there's always a balance. Uh, unfortunately, Israelis don't play baseball. I think baseball is a wonderful metaphor for what we do. Uh, first of all, in the sport of baseball, there's a lot of failure. And even the most successful, so a baseball player who is batting is trying to hit the ball, a very good batter still misses most of the time. Scholarship is like that. A very good scholar still most of our papers and most of our ideas don't work out and fail. And I always, I try to teach this to my students, that if you want to be a scholar, you need to be willing to wake up to a lot of bad days where things don't work out and keep going. And most people, they might say they're, they're down for that, but they're not. When push comes to shove, they'd like to be told they're doing a good job. Mostly in scholarship, you find out you're not doing a good enough job. And then there's another thing that parallels baseball very nicely, which is baseball is both a team and an individual sport. So, and there are metrics for success in both domains. So the team wins or loses. So they could think of the team as the department, but you could have a not so good team and have some great players and you definitely like to have great players, and the players themselves are rewarded more for, the sex, for their own success than for the success of the team. So, you know, you can have a department that's not a great department, but there's some spectacular scholarships. So that's like a mediocre baseball team, but there's some really good pitchers and hitters there. And they'll be well paid, and they'll have very long and rewarding careers. And you can have very strong teams where the individual players are not so great, but somehow they manage to work together. But the ideal scenario from the point of view of the team and the players is that you're a good player, you're individually successful, and you play for a good team. Good players like to play on good teams because they like to win. So I'm lucky I have the pleasure of being surrounded by a lot of good players, and we also play well as a team. And our team activities, whether it's the scholarship that we sometimes do together, we collaborate, we write papers together, I write papers with my colleagues, but we also collaborate on graduate student education, and that's a team sport. So the best of all possible worlds is to be a good player on a good team, and I'm lucky that I can say that I've had that in my career. Uh, I also enjoyed playing on the Hebrew University economics team. We had, a, we had a, a lot of good players and a good team. 